For a long time, astronomy and cosmology have been dominated by the idea of dark matter, which is even said to make up the majority of the universe. Now, physicists are finally doing away with dark matter and developing a new theory of gravity. This means that many of the old theories about the origin of the universe are now being revised, and we are at the beginning of a new science. But what will our picture of the universe look like if there is no dark matter and no dark energy? What role do the fundamental forces and the discoveries of the James Webb Space Telescope play in this? Did you also think dark matter was real? You are not alone. The existence of this matter was long treated by science as a matter of course and as a proven fact. But what many did not know was that dark matter, like dark energy, was always just a concept, a mere idea to fill in the gaps in scientists' explanations. And now researchers have to realize that they may have made a mistake here. Because the JWST is showing us discoveries that contradict our old theories. Regardless of whether we are talking about the Big Bang or the formation of the first stars and galaxies, the real images from space show us that the universe was much more developed 13.6 billion years ago than a Big Bang would have allowed. This universe does not look young or as if it only came into being 200 million years ago. Researchers have found a number of very advanced galaxies, and there is still no trace of the hypothetical first giant stars. Instead, more and more mysterious and very large structures are appearing that do not fit the picture of a young universe. Our universe must be older, or it may even be eternal. This means that many approaches to our astrophysics have been based on false assumptions for more than 100 years, and these assumptions include dark matter. Dark matter, how did scientists actually come up with it? Who would have thought that the history of dark matter actually began with Sir Isaac Newton in the 17th century? Newton revolutionized our understanding of the natural world with his theory of universal gravitation. It simply states that all objects in the universe attract each other through gravity. Gravity is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance. Newton's laws were able to describe the movements of the planets in the solar system with impressive accuracy. Newton's theory was sufficient to explain the movements of the planets in the solar system for many centuries, but then the first anomalies appeared that could no longer be explained by gravity. One of the first of these anomalies was the precession of Mercury's orbit. In the 19th century, the French astronomer Urban Le Verrier postulated that Mercury's orbit was influenced by the gravitational pull of an unknown planet. This supposed planet, called Vulcan, was searched for intensively for many years. It was only when improved telescopes made it clear that there could certainly be no other planet between Venus and the Sun that the Vulcan theory was abandoned. Nevertheless, the deviations in Mercury's orbit could never be fully explained, which is why this deviation is still regarded today as the door opener for the idea of additional invisible matter. The term dark matter was first used in the 1930s by a Swiss astronomer named Fritz Zwicky. Zwicky studied clusters of galaxies and realized that the visible mass of the galaxies was not sufficient to explain the observed effects of their mutual gravitational attraction. He therefore suggested that there must be a form of matter that is not directly visible as it does not emit or reflect light, but nevertheless has sufficient mass to cause the visible gravitational effects. This was the real beginning of the idea of dark matter. Over the decades, further observations strengthened the dark matter hypothesis. In particular, Vera Rubin's observations of the rotation curves of galaxies in the 1970s provided much more evidence, showing that the stars in the outer regions of galaxies rotate faster than the visible mass actually allows. This also indicated that there must be an additional mass that cannot be directly observed and again dark matter came into play. Despite these observations and indications, dark matter remained one of the great unsolved questions in physics. Its exact nature was still unknown until the end, even though we have made so many attempts to detect it and there is no direct evidence of its existence. Today, the existence of dark matter is being doubted in more and more scientific circles. The latest discoveries by the James Webb Space Telescope are one of the reasons for this. Discrepancies such as the Hubble constant, which has been known for many years, further indicate that something is wrong with our cosmology. 
The Hubble constant basically tells us how galaxies move apart due to the expansion of the universe. Different measurement methods came up with different results. Researchers refer to the differences as the Hubble stress. Actually, the measurements should always be the same. It is very likely that errors have crept into our assumptions about the expansion of the universe, which may have something to do with dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter is supposed to explain gravitational effects in the universe that cannot be explained by visible matter alone. While dark energy was used to explain phenomena such as the accelerated expansion of the universe, since the particle accelerator in Geneva has never even come close to proving the existence of the two forces, we must slowly rethink and find new explanations for the existence of the universe and the dynamics that drive it. Mond, the alternative explanation for gravitational phenomena. Did you know that for many years there have been completely different approaches to describing movements in the cosmos and the interdependencies between objects? One of these alternative theories is Modified Newtonian Dynamics, or MOND for short. The idea proposes that the laws of gravity need to be adjusted slightly at extremely low accelerations, such as those found in the outer regions of galaxies. This adjustment is such that there is a fundamental acceleration threshold below which Newton's laws of gravity no longer apply. Instead, the gravitational forces there behave a little more strongly than previously described by classical physics. Such effects are possible in space. Some researchers are even of the opinion that there could be at least one more fundamental force in the universe that we do not yet know about. It could be involved in such slight deviations. Mond can explain almost perfectly why the stars in the outer regions of galaxies rotate faster than the visible mass of the galaxy would allow and dark matter then becomes superfluous to explain the phenomenon. Furthermore, Mond can also coherently explain the flat rotation curves of galaxies without the need for dark matter, in which the gravitational force is not linear at very low accelerations, but decreases more strongly. The theory emerged in the early 1980s and was proposed by the Israeli physicist Mordecai Milgram. However, Mond never achieved great recognition, as the whole world still firmly believed in dark matter at the time. TEVES stands for Tensor Vector Scalar Gravity and is a further development of Mond. Astrophysicist Jacob Bekenstein added scalar and vector fields to the current law of gravity in order to extend the general theory of relativity and explain various cosmological observations without dark matter. Although the theory is coherent, it too was not taken seriously, and this may have been another mistake. Similarly, the theory slightly modified the general form of Einstein's field equations by changing the geometry of the space-time continuum, leading to altered gravitational dynamics on large cosmological scales. You can think of scalar and vector fields as invisible forces distributed in space. Scalar fields act like uniformly distributed pressure or temperature changes that are equally strong everywhere but have no sense of direction. Vector fields, on the other hand, are like the wind, which not only has a strength, but also a clear direction in which it blows. The two fields have something to do with gravity or the motion processes in galaxies in that they act like invisible helpers that determine how fast and in which direction the stars and other objects in a galaxy move. Imagine that the scalar fields give the stars a little push that makes them move faster, and the vector fields steer them in a certain direction, much like the wind drives and steers a sailboat. Thus, these fields help to explain some inexplicable cosmic dance movements of the stars without the need for dark matter. All these alternative theories have long been seen as contradictory to the established traditional theories, which until recently were considered almost incontrovertible truths. But now everything is different. On the one hand, we are dealing with completely new discoveries that are no longer consistent with the old physics, and on the other, even the established theories have never succeeded in describing and explaining the entire universe. What role do Webb's discoveries play? The astronomy fans among you will already know that the James Webb Space Telescope is currently shaking up science. With an age of 13.5 to 13.6 billion years, galaxies such as GLASS, Z11, and Macy's Galaxy no longer fit the picture of the Big Bang, which is said to have taken place 13.8 billion years ago. These two are not alone. In fact, researchers have found dozens of other galaxies that are at least as old, if not older. 
If we consider that, according to previous scientific theories, these galaxies need billions of years to develop. The hour of their birth must have been before the Big Bang, and that cannot be the case. Subsequently, the universe is probably much older than previously assumed. Another possibility would be that stars and galaxies formed more quickly. However, there are currently no conclusive concepts for this. Nevertheless, this explanation is still favored by many traditional researchers. These scientists find it difficult to get away from ideas such as the Big Bang or the expansion of the universe. One person who has shown that all that is needed here is a little skill and an open mind is the Canadian researcher Rajendra Gupta. The astronomer from the University of Ottawa presented a new theory of gravity in which he combined the Mann theory with a variation of the cosmic constants. Cosmic constants are forces in space that are considered to be linear forces and are therefore used as standards. If we allow for the possibility that these constants are somewhat more flexible than we previously thought, the universe could be 26.7 billion years old, or even over 40 billion years old. Subscribe now and be part of every new video.